terror from above. In London, Indy Jones is called to an emergency meeting. Mysterious skycraft have been ravaging the shipping lanes, making off with a fortune in diamonds, bonds, and raw materials. Unable to detect how the craft are powered, experts come up with a frightening hypothesis involving the use of psychokinetic levitation. To get to the truth, Indy must search through a labyrinth of archaeological information reaching back 4,000 years. But as he and his team move from Africa to Tibet to the American Southwest, they discover something even more astounding. A clandestine organization is fast becoming an evil world-dominating power, and the only way to stop it is in a high-tech, no Holds barred battle on land and in the air. Indy takes to the sky to stop a deadly reign of death. Indiana Jones and the Sky Pirates. Hello and welcome back to this damn fully dualistic crusade. This is my video review of the seventh of the Indiana Jones Banto novels, Indiana Jones and the Sky Pirates, which was the first of two novels to be written by Martin Caden and the first to not be written by Rob McGregor. So while this is still loosely tied into the same sort of continuity so it's technically supposed to follow the McGregor books this is of course a different author and the tone is completely different uh, there are some references and mentions of events from the McGregor books and this does take place after those so while it's still a prequel it does keep in following with the sort of world that McGregor built up However, outside of that and the fact that it has Indiana Jones on the cover and the title, you know, outside of those mentions uh, of various characters and elements from the previous McGregor books, this really has nothing to do with those. So while it is technically part of the same series, you can very clearly tell it's a different author. Uh, this book is also a complete mess. Uh, it is uh, from start to finish a slog. This is not a good book. And the Caden books are the ones you hear about as being just plain terrible from most indie fans when you haven't read these before. Now, Caden, uh, most famously, his, his most famous work was the book Cyborg, which became the basis of the Six Million Dollar Man and Bionic Woman series. Uh, he also wrote the book that was adapted into the film Marooned. So he had done... Uh, you know, works of science fiction with uh, also works of what would be termed, I guess, adventure or survival adventure, if you will. So, you know, he, he seemed like, you know, I suppose, a decent choice to tackle Indiana Jones when they switched authors. Uh, he also was a lifelong aviation enthusiast and exceptional pilot, which would explain why I'd say the vast majority of Indiana Jones and the Sky Pirates not only deal with uh, aerial combat and trying to defeat uh, foes in the air, but actually about airplanes and aviation and building a plane and modifying a plane and souping up a plane. Um, if you don't like aviation... 90% of this book is aviation. I could say maybe even more than 90%. Um, so if you want to know about taking an old larger plane and basically replacing every part on it and souping it up with these uh, souped up engines and doing all this crazy stuff, um, this is the book for you. It is an absolute mess of a book and... Uh, it, it really is boring as all get out. And what doesn't help is that it doesn't feel like an Indiana Jones story. It doesn't feel like Indiana Jones himself. He's not acting like himself because Indy actually in this story is working as a sort of government agent. The book does open with a nice sort of action beat where uh, we have a gigantic diamond heist that happens and it's revealed to essentially be German agents trying to obtain diamonds and massive funds and things to help the uh building of uh, Nazi Germany and also to retrieve certain mysterious artifacts that were also there. Uh, but they basically get uh, sort of cut off by this mysterious force that seems to be using a gigantic spacecraft of sorts that uh, has no discernible power that can be glimpsed. So it basically seems to have been uh, that uh, these these would-be uh, robbers were stopped and killed by a gigantic UFO and other UFO craft. 
and this is done in the opening, so it's a sort of prologue like what we get in the McGregor books, and, you know, it, it's done pretty well, and there's an element of mystery set up, and that seems like we're going to get off to a, a decent start, but then, uh, you know, it doesn't spell anything out, and that's a key problem you're going to run into this book, because frequently plot information is withheld and only relayed to the reader after quite some time, and it's done after the fact, and in a sort of, oh, yeah, that was actually da 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 and I didn't tell you because it, it's classified, or I just didn't feel like telling you at the time, but I'm telling you now, four chapters later. Essentially, Indy becomes uh, tapped by government agencies, and essentially the CIA, to investigate these occurrences, and get a sort of sabbatical leave from his teaching job, and he's also made to sort of build together a ragtag team of various individuals on both sides of the law, to then also start building up and souping up this aircraft to ostensibly go up against this unidentified flying object with nefarious intentions, so it seems. And of course, none of this is explicitly stated. They just start doing this stuff. And Indy is doing all kinds of things like exchanging code phrases and doing dead drops of information and meeting uh, uh, camouflage contacts. He's basically doing all kinds of spycraft and, and kind of acting not in like either. It, it just feels very weird because frequently there are passages of this book that feel like they're um, like the author is trying to take Indiana Jones and just drop him into a spy novel. And while, you know, Indy in a more spy type story could work, it feels really forced here and nothing is explained and you don't quite know what's going on. And then we go back to building up the team and building this plane for, I guess, or the reader guesses to go up against the UFO object. Uh, if that were not complicated enough, it is further revealed again after the fact that apparently Indy has been in league with the CIA already uh, as part of this plan and the artifacts I mentioned that the supposed evil forces are going after who may or may not be alien forces are actually not real artifacts. They, they were manufactured and the CIA got Indiana Jones to make them look authentic. So Indy has actually made false artifacts and has not only made sure they got into enemy hands, but even plans and leads a robbery to steal one of those artifacts at great risk to then make it look like it's genuine. And that could work if it was explained why this was being done, but it is not explained. And we only get the barest possible explanation again after the fact. So this book is frequently perplexing, confusing, tonally it's a mess, it goes all over the place, and it is a gigantic slog to get through. Uh, this is not an involving book. This is not an interesting book. This is a boring book. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's such a complete mess that... We don't even get introduced to the villains until almost the end of the book, and it is quite obvious uh, as you're reading along that it's most likely not an alien or otherworldly force, and that it's someone of human origins who has some nefarious plan and is trying to look as if they have a UFO. And it's finally revealed after the 200-page mark, which is getting close to the end of the book, that our villains are actually a sort of secret cabal of of uh, various billionaires and, and, and rich industrialists who think the world is going to break out into war again and that it is inevitable. So they faked their own deaths and pooled their resources to build this gigantic uh, ship that actually runs on a sort of prototype jet engine. And they want to basically try and scare the world into uniting so that way they can achieve a sort of world peace and also dominate the world. So when you hear that, all you can do is kind of think of, well, that's kind of the plot of Watchmen, isn't it? <laughs> so that's the villain's plot, and it basically finally gets spelled out after the 200-page mark. And then it doesn't really allude to it again. Uh, it's also not helpful that the villains have appeared in other identities throughout the book. There's a lot of usage of other identities and other names, which goes into the, the themes of spying and spycraft and it being like an espionage novel. The rest of Indiana Jones's motley crew he's sort of put together, um, unfortunately, they're more like character archetypes. They're 
not really sketched out very well and you know there's there's not really much to be interested in or care about to these people they're they're basically constantly uh helping indy on some of his random escapades and they don't really even know what's going on and then they're otherwise back in the plane getting ready for the mission that hasn't been spelled out yet and rebuilding it and flying to another airfield and rebuilding it some more and and dealing with more um uh, army officials and and uh and government agency officials and the, the the this book it just feels random it there's it, it just goes and goes and goes and you are going to get so much technical information about airplanes aviation and rebuilding planes than you ever wanted to know so much so it's that it's like you're actually getting chunks of an airplane manual throughout or an aviation manual how to do this and a plane well you're going to get that shoved in the book um the only really uh, good character of of the uh, sort of secondary group that indy has put together for this mission that is not defined and honestly the only good element of the book is the semi-potential love interest the character of gail parker because there has to of course it, since this is still trying to sort of be a pulpy story you have to have a female character in the group uh, she has an interesting sort of background she has a nice dynamic with indy and she does become a recurring character because she does pop up in caden's next book so i do give him props for coming up with a nice potential love interest but unfortunately even her character isn't very much developed, but she is the most developed out of the new characters in this book, so that is why she is the only one that is really interesting. Uh, we build to, uh, finally, the climax of the story, which is an aerial battle in the sort of souped-up super plane that Andy and his crew have rebuilt, and they go up against the giant jet-powered ship. Uh, but this is put all the way at the end of the book, where we suddenly find ourselves in the American Southwest, which seems a sort of random location. The book does at least explain why they're there, um, but we've also not heard from the, the villains really since they were revealed and the, the, the final battle is this aerial battle and nothing is explained. There is no resolution and the actual battle itself takes place in roughly the last 20 to 30 pages and when it ends, it ends with like a hard stop like draw the line underneath the bottom of the page, that's it. There's no resolution. We don't really know what happened to all of the villains. I suppose they were all on the ship itself. It's it's really just, it's another element of this book that leaves a definite bad taste in the mouth. I do like the description of uh, the actual setup of the final battle and it having to take place at a high altitude and everyone is freezing to death on this plane and they have to worry about their oxygen tanks and it is an older plane and, you know, it's sort of barely holding together with all these modifications they did. Um, but, you know, we, we get into the action of this sequence, which finally is a good amount of action. There's There's not a whole lot of action in this book which doesn't help there's a few little tiny moments that just seemingly come out of nowhere in the you know overall over 300 pages of the book but you have to wait until this final aerial battle to get the big action climax set piece um but even that feels repetitive and we don't get any information further about the villains and it's just back and forth dives and shooting and trying not to die. And then suddenly, oh, yay, we won. That's it. That's all you get. So ultimately, this is by far and away the worst of the indie novels so far. While I do have some major issues with some of the McGregor novels, and I don't think any of those are perfect, uh, they are absolutely without, uh, I have no complaints uh, about those anymore when I compare it to Indiana Jones and the Sky Pirates, which, I mean, if you just took the name Indiana Jones off the cover and you just changed the name of the character in the book, 
this could be any other book. I mean, it's it's that generic. The only real connection we have to uh, the previous McGregor novels is there is a mention of Andy's dead wife, Deirdre, which uh, it, it pops up once or twice, and the Jack Shannon character that McGregor created, he returns here, and he's actually back in Chicago randomly, and he's running his old bar and sort of tied in with the, the mob in Chicago again. Um, but he doesn't feel the, the, uh, like the same person, and it, it, it's barely alluded to how this connects to the continuity for the character that McGregor set up and where he left him with his uh, with his new wife at the end of Genesis Deluge, and then, uh, of course, getting into uh, him popping up in Unicorn Legacy. But basically, it just feels like a, a sort of basic attempt at a connection to the previous books it does not feel like the same character it's just you know he's in a similar location and he's got the same name um just like indy does not feel like the mcgregor indy here and does not feel like any version of indiana jones you'd ever think of um this book really does feel completely outside of the Indiana Jones realm, even though it's not delving into the supernatural like the McGregor books did. And it doesn't go into the crazy land of Interior World, which is the book that precedes it. However, I will take the crazy drug trip of Interior World again. I mean, as as weird as that book was, it wasn't boring, um, you know, because it just went completely mad after the first 50 pages. And and he is basically on a drug trip for the rest of the book. At least that's entertaining and it's got a pulpy flavor and stuff happens. Nothing happens in Sky Pirates except you're reading bits of an aviation manual and random stuff happens that makes no sense, and then it's only later on that characters in the book have to actually tell you, the reader, oh, yeah, well, this happened, but I was actually already working for the CIA, and uh, I just didn't tell anybody, and I'm telling you now, but I'm still keeping things to myself, and maybe you'll find out about them in 50 pages if, if the author feels like telling you. So... That issue happens frequently throughout the book. The book is withholding information and then just kind of throws it out there as a sort of aside, you know, maybe a hundred pages later. And you have to think back and go, wait, oh, so that's why this happened. And then this and then that um, events occur. Characters die. You don't care. Uh, they, they, you're not invested in this book. And it's such an absolute mess and such a slog of a read that you just want it to be over. The only bits of interest are the sort of relationship dynamic between Indy and Gil Parker and the final aerial battle at the end, which unfortunately is extremely rushed and ends very abruptly, and so much so that it really does make you angry. So uh, unfortunately, I think Indiana Jones and the Sky Pirates does deserve its fan reputation. In fact, I'll go beyond that. I think this is... I, I, there's there's nothing to recommend here. It's just bad. It's bad throughout. There's there's not one great set piece. There's not a great line. There is a hysterically terrible line that was so bad and so unexpected that I actually had to set the book down and I was laughing uncontrollably and it took me some time to actually come back to it and it's when our villains are finally revealed and they're just talking amongst themselves and we get the little background oh they're billionaire industrialists who faked their own death and pulled their money to build a fake ufo and try to make all humanity stop fighting each other so then they could rule the world um and they're talking about how oh well indiana jones keeps messing with us but we can't kill him because reasons because the the plot says so i guess um but uh, they they're they're amazed at how much jones knows and they're talking amongst themselves and one of them out of nowhere no context for it whatsoever uh has has an exclamation uh, you know they're they're like uh, but instead of saying oh my gosh or how could he be doing this or this or that uh, that's what they're essentially trying to say but for some reason Caden thought it was a good idea to have this character we don't really know anything about who is apparently one of the villains just suddenly exclaim halfway down the page and i'm i'm not making this up literally the line is by the horned toads of my ancestors. 
by the horned toads of my ancestors. That's the line. I, I mean, at least it's better than another aviation manual section, but you know what? Scratch that. That is the best thing about this book. This book has the line, by the horned toads of my ancestors. Yeah, yeah. That line, the Gail Parker character, keep those. <laughs> Throw away everything else. Because uh, this book is just plain terrible. But yeah, by the horned toads of my ancestors, that just came out of nowhere. And I just, I couldn't stop laughing for at least five minutes. It was just so unexpected. So uh, if you read this book, you'll have that to look forward to. Um, honestly, though, I can see how this plot could have worked. I don't mind the plot. I think the plot actually was fine. Even the setup and the mystery aspect and, and the actual villain reveal, that could have been executed perfectly. This could have been a good indie book. It could have been a, a good standalone spy novel if you wanted to go that way. Um, but trying to mash all this together and not developing characters and not developing the plot and not developing the villains and spending 90% of the book describing how to tear apart and rebuild a stupid plane, I mean, no, that's not how to write an indie book. And... Worst of all, Indiana Jones acts like kind of like an asshole most of the time and doesn't act like himself really and is trying to be a sort of government spy and do all this clandestine stuff. And it just doesn't fit. It doesn't work. The tone is totally not Indiana Jones and is so scattershot that it's not an enjoyable experience. It's not a book I would recommend to anyone. This is a book that I would say is for completists and diehard fans only. And it's one of those, if you're going to read the Bantam novels, you're going to have to read all of them and get the overall experience. They do have a very mixed reputation, but this is definitely uh, one of the lowest, if not the lowest rated. And it's a terrible book start to finish. There, It's... There's not one element of it that is properly executed, and um, it makes sense that Caden was uh, had such an aviation background because you read this, it is very obvious. This was written by somebody who was a lifelong pilot and was an aviation expert because that's all you're going to get in this book is more and more about flying and rebuilding planes and tearing apart the plane again and rebuilding it again and more stuff about planes and more stuff about planes and then a sort of half-hearted attempt to also be a spy novel. It's just nothing in this book works. Um, so this this should only be for indie diehard fans. If you want to read every single indie novel, you get to look forward to Indiana Jones and the Sky Pirates, which is a very dull, boring, uninspiring frustrating uh, book that goes on for far too long that y you're just you're going to really have to force yourself through it is a slog to get through so even though i've had issues with all the mcgregor books before this nothing compares to this book i'll even take the the visions and the drug trips and the supernatural elements and talking to merlin and turning into an eagle and all that stuff in the mcgregor books that you get I will take that any day over the mind-numbingly dull and boring and just plain terrible experience of reading Indiana Jones and the Sky Pirates. To talk about the actual book printing itself, once again, we have a beautiful Drew Struzan painting. This is the only other great thing about this book is the cover looks beautiful, but we don't even get the big ufo we do get of course the back as all these have a sort of wraparound effect we get i guess that's supposed to be the super modified plane they're flying around in and then we have the sort of satellite ufo jet ships that they are battling but we don't get the full sort of mothership and then if you open the book you can get that sort of wraparound effect so once again Absolutely beautiful cover. Uh, two other notable elements. You see Indy has a camera, which he does carry a camera here, and he actually uses the camera more than his revolver or his whip. So imagine an Indy story where his greatest weapon is a camera, which half the time he goes, oh, damn, I forgot. I'm supposed to be taking photos with this thing. I just totally forgot I'm wearing a big camera. 
Then there's even a section where he has to tell other characters how to use and operate a camera. You can't make this stuff up. Um, I also like that uh, Struzan did put Gail Parker on the cover, even though she's just kind of there on the side. Um, I like getting the love interest on here, and it does remind me of his cover of Seven Veils, where he got uh, Deirdre on the cover. Uh, but here it's just kind of random how she's sort of on the side in a triangle. She's like, somebody cut a triangle hole in the cover, and her, she spokes her head out. Um but yeah, I do like that she actually got on the cover. And I like the colors and the sort of purple sky and the flaming ships and explosions. So great cover. That's the only truly great element of this book is the cover. So that's why you should pick up a copy. So you have a complete set of the Bantam novels with their Drew Struzan covers. Uh, because again, otherwise this book is utter crap really this is a later printing so it does have the bantam logo the first printings will have the original bantam falcon imprint uh, that also means it doesn't have the embossing on the title uh, but it still has a nice glossy finish and as i like to point out this does still have uh, indie named as indie on the little tagline and also he's referred to as Indy Jones on the back. So it does retain that from the McGregor novels. That's just something I like as a sort of unique identifier uh, saying, you know, underlining that these are prequels and it's not yet the full Indiana Jones we know from the films, because usually he's just referred to as Jones, Professor Jones, Henry Jones, Indiana Jones, or Indy, but rarely, if ever, is it Indy Jones. In fact, I usually only notice that on the Bantam novels, so uh, that is retained here. So those are my overall thoughts on the seventh Indiana Jones novel and the first by Martin Caden, Indiana Jones and the Sky Pirates, which, again, I feel is just, it's a mess. This is a terrible book. There's nothing to recommend. And I honestly don't ever see myself returning to this book unless I do a complete reread of the Bantam novels, which I'm sure I'll do every once in a while over the years, but um, this is just terrible. I mean, I, again, I had my problems and issues with the McGregor books, but this is just terrible. I mean, it's... It, it, when when you read indie fans saying how bad the Caden novels are and how this one feels like, you know, you're learning how to fly a plane, it feels like a technical manual, they're not kidding. And if it was just that, that would be one thing. But it tries to mix that into an actual, you know, story plot while it's trying to be a spy novel, but it still pretends to be a pulp adventure at times. Nothing is developed. But the single biggest problem is how this book continually withholds information from the reader and from other characters uh, to the point where when you actually get the relevant information all these chapters and pages later and it's just tossed off as an aside, you literally start yelling at the book and the characters as in, why would you not w say that earlier? Why couldn't we have done this in the first place? Now I know what I've been reading the last four or five chapters and scratching my head going, what is going on? Um, that's the single biggest problem overall. If it stopped withholding information and didn't put off the entire climax until the last couple pages of the book and then just suddenly stop with no real resolution, I wouldn't hate this as much as I do. Um I mean, okay, do I really hate this book? No. Is it the worst book I've ever read? No, but it's just bad. I didn't expect it to be this level of bad, and it will take you a while to get through. I mean, this this is not a book you can just pick up and enjoy. Um, I didn't enjoy any of this. Uh, again, it, I, I like the, the character of Gail Parker, but she's barely developed. Um, some of the opening was okay, but then we just go in a completely different direction. Um, Indiana Jones does not act or sound like Indiana Jones throughout this entire book and is frequently quite nasty and cold-hearted and just... I, I, 
yeah, I, you just don't care. You just want this book to be over, and thank goodness I got through it. So, again, this is a slog to get through. This is a terrible book. I would not recommend this book to anyone, but if you are a completist and if you're an Indiana Jones fan, I do think you need to read through all of the Bantam novels just to have the experience, and I'm very sure you will have a similar experience and never want to return through this book ever again. Um if you do, uh, or I know I'm going to find myself rereading this again at some point, and I know the first thing that's going to happen when I pick up uh, Sky Pirates again and I go to reread it, I'm going to be like, by the horned toads of my ancestors, what am I doing to myself? So as always, I hope my thoughts on the man in the hat, our favorite archaeologist, and the world of Indiana Jones in print has been at least somewhat fun and informative. I know the Bantam novels are hard to find now. They're long out of print but they do pop up on eBay and in used bookshops, so uh, you have to be a little patient. It takes a while, but I was able to finally piece together a whole set, so that's why I'm finally doing this read-through now. Um, even though they are a mixed bag, there are some great elements, and I do think it's rewarding for all indie fans to finally read the books if you haven't. If you've read Sky Pirates and have opinions about it, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Um, this book was so bad and so weird that I... I wish I had people around me I could talk about it with because I just don't know what happened here <laughs> I mean that's how I felt about interior world because that was just insanity but at least it was entertaining um but this this is just awful so uh you know if, if you've read this book I'm sure you have definite opinions about it um so again I would love to hear anyone's thoughts about Indiana Jones and the Sky Pirates in the comments below because if only to just commiserate about how bad this book is please do keep supporting your local independent bookstores by hopefully being able to pick up some of the out of print indie bantam novels and as always keep reading keep reading print books and thank you ever so much for watching